Here's Brody Brazil. So here we are right around the corner from finding out whether the San Jose Sharks, finishing dead last in the NHL standings, will be rewarded with the number one overall pick via the Draft Lottery 2024 for the NHL's entry draft later on this summer. And most likely, the Sharks, or whoever pick first, are going to take Macklin Celebrini. If he goes to San Jose, what a franchise changer he could be. And it would be this very first opportunity for the Sharks to make a number one overall selection. They've never had the chance to do that. I'll explain the math behind their odds in just a second. I know there are two stories out there, 18 or 25%. We'll explain that in just a bit. But first, here are details on the draft lottery. It happens on Tuesday, live from the NHL Network Studios in Secaucus, New Jersey. It will be broadcast live on ESPN. Now, all 16 teams that did not qualify for the playoffs, they are in this draft lottery. And by the way, we're still operating on that new format that was initiated in 2022. The league trying to cut down on teams' ability to tank near the end of a season to try and get a higher draft pick. So even a team like the Sharks, it's not even close to 50-50 whether they will draft first overall. It's more like a one in four odds, which I'm about to explain to you. So here are the Sharks' odds. Now, they finished last in the league. 19-54-9 and nine was their record. 47 points. They were clear-cut the worst team, worst record-wise, in the National Hockey League. And as I mentioned before, they've never had a number one overall pick before in the entry draft. They did have the number one and number two players from 1997 on their team for a very long time, but it was Boston who took Joe Thornton overall number one in 1997. And then the Sharks had their highest draft pick ever. It was number two. It was Patrick Marlowe. And just think about that for a second. What a franchise changer he was. Now that's Patrick Marlowe. The Hall of Famer, no doubt. He's already got his jersey retired up in the rafters of SAP Center. But that's the kind of aspirations the Sharks have in getting a draft opportunity this high here in 2024. So no pressure to Macklin Celebrini or anybody else, but they're counting on capitalizing on a high draft pick this year, just like they did last year with the number four overall pick. Now, the chances are actually both. I explained before that you've heard the 18.5% number. You've probably also heard... 25.5%. And both of those are accurate in different ways. I'm going to explain here in just a second why it's actually better. The 25% odds are more close to reality for the San Jose Sharks. Let me explain the Sharks' second pick here of the top 16. That actually comes from the Pittsburgh Penguins. It's part of the Eric Carlson trade from a while back. And the way it works, it goes like this. If the Penguins move into the top 10 via the draft lottery, so right now sitting at 14, but if the odds work in their favor, they move up to, let's say, the eighth spot. They have 72 hours to decide to either give their 2024 first round pick to the Sharks, just say, here you go, we're not going to protect it, or to push the selection into the 2025 NHL draft with no protections. So again, that's something to consider about the Sharks' Second pick of the first round, again, it's ranked 14th in terms of the chances to pick first. It's about a 1.5% chance that that actually happens, but it is ineligible to pick first overall. So the Sharks are hoping that it's somewhere middle of the road, an early pick that the Penguins don't want. They'll get to keep it. They'll get to use it. Two very early picks for the San Jose Sharks in this draft. So the Sharks and those number one odds. Technically, you saw their 18.5% chance of being drawn first to receive that first overall selection. And if they get it, it's as simple as that. They are eligible for it. Also, teams 12 to 16, like that 14 pick from Pittsburgh, they can only move up 10 draft positions. So the Sharks would actually get the number one pick if any of those final four teams, 12, 13, 14, 15, actually 5, 16, if any of those teams get the first pick, it defaults in going straight to the San Jose Sharks. Therefore, if you do the math and you take the 18.5% chance that the Sharks have of getting the first pick all on their own, and you add up all the percentages of teams 12 through 16, that adds up to 25.5% percent of a chance. So in reality, it's not the 18% number. They have a 25.5% chance of picking first. Again, do you understand that? It's very complicated. They have their own odds, plus they get the odds combined of all the other teams which are ineligible 
for that very first pick. And that's how we arrive at 25.5%. There are some other scenarios here to understand. For example, the Sharks cannot actually pick lower than third. They're going to get a top three pick no matter what. First pick goes like this. If the Sharks get it, it's theirs. Or if the Flyers, Minnesota, Pittsburgh, Detroit, or St. Louis get it, the Sharks win the lottery. Again, all five of those teams later on are the 12 through 16 teams. They're ineligible. Okay, if somebody else gets the first pick, all right, it comes to the second pick. If an eligible team wins and picks first, and then the Sharks get the second pick. Well, they obviously get it. Or if the Flyers, Minnesota, Pittsburgh, Detroit, or St. Louis get the second pick, it goes to San Jose. Third pick, if the prior two spots are spoken for and they go to eligible teams that could draft first and could draft second, it automatically clicks in that the Sharks do get the third overall pick. So that is one perk of finishing last you still are guaranteed a top three pick in this draft. You can't slip the fifth or sixth or anything nightmarish like that. You get a top three pick. Okay, so my insights begin with this. It's kind of interesting, right? That last year, it's the same four bottom teams, San Jose, Chicago, Anaheim, and Columbus, in a different order, but it's that same pack of four that have the highest opportunity to draft first this year. So I don't know if I'm surprised by that, I just find it interesting, and especially in the case of Chicago. They had the third worst record last year. Remember, they leapfrogged Anaheim and Columbus to pick first in that monumental year of getting Connor Bedard. Now, if we're going to do the whole Bedard versus Celebrini thing, I don't know if that's fair. I don't know how we'd actually do that. Only time will tell how last year's draft compares to this year's draft, not just the first overall pick, but it was definitely a deeper draft overall last season. My point is, a lot of people are already saying, if Chicago gets anywhere near that first pick again, there is definitely going to be some suspicion of this process, if you catch my drift. How unbelievable would it be that they jump up multiple spots both years to capture the top overall pick? So a lot of people are superstitiously counting Chicago out to get the top pick, but they're also saying if that happens, it'll be a definite sign to them. But I, I mentioned before, the Sharks have never had an opportunity like this, and you have to think about what the hockey gods owe them and what they've been through in a very difficult rebuild that took a lot of demolition and a lot of prep work to start right now where they're at again and, and rebuilding the franchise. And that brings me to Macklin Celebrini, who is absolutely in my mind who they would take with the number one overall pick. He might be NHL ready for the next season. He will soon be NHL ready. And I think he will soon be a franchise changer. And the Sharks at this point, they not only just need talent, they not only need a pipeline to get thicker, and they'll use that second first round high draft pick as well too, if in fact they're able to keep it. But my point is they also need an attraction. They're at the stage of rebuilding where the prospects are there, the future is down the line. You can kind of see it coming, but to have somebody like Celebrini as a first overall draft pick and probably, let's be honest, playing for your team as soon as next season, that would draw more people out to games. That would generate more interest. That would accelerate the process of interest and quite honestly, development most likely for this San Jose franchise. So in terms of never having a chance like this after 30 something years, and they didn't even have a good expansion draft. You compare what the Golden Knights got in their expansion situation, what the Kraken got. Go look up how the San Jose Sharks did their expansion draft. They picked a bunch of extra players from the Minnesota North Stars and then had some other different small benefits, but nothing like a current NHL expansion draft. So do I sit here and say they are owed this? Not necessarily, but I think they're due for this. That's probably the best way to put it. And they would definitely put Macklin to good use. Like I said... They are in definite need of something specific, just like Mr. Celebrini. So that's it. We'll all be watching on Tuesday evening. It's a big deal. I mean, this night is a bigger deal than the actual draft, because if they can lock down that number one spot, you basically know how it's going to go. Hey, you made it here to the end of this video. You know I appreciate that. Thumbs up down below. That'll greatly help me in this video and this channel. And I really appreciate you being here. I hope to see you next time. The best way to do that is to go down there and hit that subscribe button right now so I can talk to you next time.